Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. All right, we're doing every book of the Bible, four minutes a book, uh, just to kind of get a good snapshot grasp of those books. Now, today we've got the book of Judges. It's the Old Testament book in the typical ordering of the Bible. It is book number seven. Now, this is a book, if you could imagine a vortex, a water vortex, um, and, and I know this is graphic and you may not want to use this when you talk about the Bible, but do you remember those old commodes? There were some old commodes that when you flush them, it didn't just like flush out, but it, it did a spiral flushing. That is the book of Judges. Um, that, and, and yeah, the commode thing is actually pretty applicable because it is a really sad book in so many different ways. I think the last three chapters of Judges um, are, are, are maybe the roughest books in the entire Bible. And so here you've got this book. Now, the, the title Judges doesn't refer to a, a courtroom type judge. These were charismatic leaders that God sent to Israel to try to help them at various times. But, but the book starts out and the judges aren't great, but, but everything just spirals down. It's like that eddy and it just goes down and down until it just goes down into the tubes. It's terrible. And there's a refrain that's frequently given in Judges. It's the refrain that there wasn't a king in Israel and everybody did what was right in their own eyes. If you take, not, not just an earthly king, God was supposed to be the king of Israel. But when you take God off the throne and everybody does what's right in their own eyes, it becomes something that's suitable for flushing down the commode. I mean, it, it is just, it is an absolutely horrid situation. And so you've got in here the stories. The first one is Deborah, and she's actually the best of the best. It's the only female judge. But Deborah gets Barak, and, and they go out and defeat the Philistines who have taken over parts of Israel uh, because uh, Israel hadn't been obedient to God. But it descends from there. You've got Gideon next. And Gideon isn't quite up to Deborah's par, but it's still not horrible. It's the beginnings of the flush. But then you get down towards Samson and the flushing's getting deeper and deeper. And here's this fellow who has every reason to be blessed by God. And he feeds his own appetites and he feeds his own desires and seems to live in total disregard to the God who called him special. And he's finally able to defeat Philistines, but only with his own demise. He, he dies in the process. It gets worse and worse. The final three chapters are absolutely deplorable, where you've got a, a, a man who's a Levite, and he's got a, a woman who lives under his roof. She's called a concubine, not necessarily a second wife, but someone who deserves his protection. She runs off and leaves him and goes home. Um, he goes and gets her back from her father, and on the process of coming home, stops for the night she is delivered out to some renegade men who are trying to have some, some uh, frolic in the night. She's given out to them. They rape her until she's dead. I mean, it's just horrible. And, and then leave her on the doorstep. He takes her home, cuts her up into 12 pieces, sends the 12 pieces out to the 12 tribes of Israel and says, come on and help me. And ultimately there's a civil war. A bunch of Benjaminites get killed, uh, including their women and children. So other women are just grabbed and given to the Benjaminites to make sure that they can continue on. It is a horrible situation in the book of Judges when people live without God on the throne. And it's a challenge for all of us to remind us God should be on the throne of our life or we are just a flush toilet going down the tubes. Graphic, yes, nonetheless true. It's why I made it your video thought for today.